Cool. What I need to do is get this trivet out of here. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use a half a stick of butter. I'm going to dump some uh, mushrooms in there. Just a few like that. I can actually eat that. Then I'm going to take some uh, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> You know that this is what was originally known as ketchup back in the 1700s. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yep, that's what they knew as ketchup. It was made by pressing mushrooms and adding salt and vinegar. Oh, really? So it goes really well with things with mushrooms because it's made from mushrooms. Interesting. So, anyway, a little trivia if you didn't know. Yeah, cool. How ketchup became known as the tomato stuff we eat now, I don't have any idea, but <laughs> that's what it was. Okay. So while that is going, I think it's cool enough now I can handle it. Yep. I'm going to light up some more charcoal and get it going. So today in this advanced class, I'm going to teach you how to make multiple items for multiple meals. And uh, while doing so, we're just going to get right into it. This is going to be cooking the entire time. There's a lot of hands-on stuff, so if you'd like to volunteer for any of it, feel free to raise your hands and volunteer. Okay. Yes. You want to use that? Oh, absolutely. That'd be great. Thanks, Ken. My good friend Ken Yoakum here. He's got some pretty awesome products. <laughs> so. Just a little bit. Okay, we're going to make a mixed berry cobbler right now, too. So you're going to see exactly how to make that. In fact, that will be the first thing that we make um, while we're doing this. To, so if we're on the menu today, we're obviously just going to have the pork tenderloins that I just finished up. Um, I'm going to finish up in here. We're going to do a mixed berry cobbler. Well, a mixed berry cake cobbler. It's got fruit in it, so it's kind of a cobbler. Um, but it's going to be a buttermilk based. Uh, we're going to do some salmon, bacon, asparagus, and some rolls. Should be pretty good. So we're going to have to get going on it pretty dang quick. But let me hurry up and finish up what I was doing right here. So in fact, if uh, somebody would like to, um, let's go ahead and take this little white tail Dutch oven and set it up over here. If somebody wants to go ahead and grab it. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to give you a real precise recipe to dump into that Dutch oven, okay? <laughs> oh dear, that is bad. What? One thing I hate about mixed berries. They leak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if somebody would like to come and open these mixed berries, there's gloves over here, and let's dump like three packages in there. Let's see what that looks like, and then we'll go from there. Are they fresh or frozen? Uh, those are frozen. They were frozen. They're not frozen any longer. The gloves are right. Uh, this, there's just a little bit of oil in there, so not much, but it doesn't need much because it's got the seasoning in it, so there's nothing really to do on that. Does it matter if they're frozen or de or de It doesn't matter. It'll all get thawed regardless of whether it is or not. <laughs> Alright, so while you're doing that, I'm going to take a look at these mushrooms and see how they're coming along. And I think I've got another spoon somewhere. It's back there we go. Now, you notice I just got those tenderloins sitting there. Mm -hmm. Is that for the juices? You're letting it yeah, rest? I'm letting it rest and letting the juices reabsorb. Okay. Okay, so this is a question answer type of a forum here. So if you have any questions about anything that I'm doing, feel free to ask and I'll be happy to answer your questions the best as I can. What I'm actually going to do to try to speed this up a little bit, I'm just going to set that right on top of there for a minute. How do you gauge how much fruit gets to put underneath and on top? There is absolutely zero precision with that at all. Um, briquettes always change depending on elevation, temperature. Like today, the barometric pressure is down because we've got a storm coming in. 
So even though it's fairly nice outside, it's like 40 something degrees, it's not cooking very well. And that's because the barometer's down. Uh, briquettes in Utah burn different than briquettes in California. Uh, Western family briquettes burn differently than uh, the Kingsford briquettes. There is absolutely zero telling how to do a recipe by how many briquettes. The thing about cast iron is it doesn't matter. It's very, very forgiving. So how many packets do you got? Oh, two. You want three? Yeah, let's get three and see what like else. You know, go it's pretty cool. So it doesn't matter how much briquettes you use. It's just a matter of how you use the briquettes. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that today with every one of these and show you how to do this. So we're going to start off with baking. We're going to do broiling. We're going to do uh, roasting. And we're going to do stewing. And I'm going to describe all those to you. So they're all methods of cooking this. It all works really good. And I'm going to teach you how to do those. But as far as amount of briquettes, there is zero way to tell. If you've got less heat, it takes longer to cook. If you got more heat, it cooks faster. That's the only precision in Dutch oven cooking. It's just the amount of time that it takes to do it. So any other questions? Right off the bat? Okay, how many are Dutch oven experts that are here? <laughs> You're the only one to hand up. I have your hand. Well, good. We're glad there's at least one. Yeah, I'm glad there's one of us because <laughs> Need somebody to teach the class, right? Let's get a view of people here. You bet. I might put you guys on YouTube. Oh, wow. If you don't want on it, block your face. <laughs> <laughs> nice hands. <laughs> okay, so we got. You want this last one? Uh, no, that's plenty. That's plenty. I'll just throw it in the garbage. I don't want anything to do with it. Okay. To be honest with you. Okay, so let's just dump that in that little garbage there. It's gonna be a mess. Okay, so what I've got is about three cups worth of mixed berries here. How full is the, the and, pan? Oh, actually, that's about four cups. We'll call it four cups. How full is the oven? Half it's full? about a third full. Third full. Okay, okay, about a third full. Okay, so let's call it four cups of mixed berries, and it can be fresh berries. Uh, just don't use it from a can on this one. You want to use fresh. Okay, so for this, we're going to use about a cup of sugar. I'm extremely precise. <laughs> okay, so about a cup of sugar. And then I'm going to use about a quarter cup of flour into the berries. Again, preciseness is a key. Okay, now the fun part you get to get in here and just squish them up a little bit. If you got. I was going to say, if you have people that are uh, celiacs or gluten intolerant, they shouldn't be eating this dessert anyway, so <laughs> probably don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, so now we're just going to make the cobbler to go on the top, and because I don't really have a lot of kitchen facilities, I just made a cobbler in here just like an hour ago. I'm just going to reuse the same one, so please forgive me. It's not gone bad. It's cold enough out here. It's as cold as your fridge. So, and you know what? I'm going to get to this meat first. I'm sorry. I don't need to keep you waiting. No, they might So, okay, so what I'm going to do with this meat right here is I'm just going to slice it. Beautifully cooked pork, perfectly cooked pork. Just for here, those. That's perfectly cooked pork. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what you want it to look like. About 20 minutes. So, and you can see now that I'm cutting it, there's very little moisture that's on the cutting board. That's because it's had a time to relax and it's reabsorbed all that moisture back into the meat, which is right where we wanted to have it. So, what we're going to do is slice it now. And then, because of my good buddy Ken, we've got a nice little stand to put the camp made stand to put it on. We're going to bring that Dutch oven over. And we're just going to toss this pork back into that nice sauce that we've made with the butter and the mushrooms and the Worcestershire sauce, which is just really Ketchup. pressed mushrooms. <laughs> what internal temperature do you go to? Uh, about 135 degrees to start and let it carry over to about 140 degrees, which is where USDA says you can do pork at now. So I'm going to use that. And then... Does anybody see where I put that lid lifter? Oh, there it is. So do you just bring a thermometer with you? I always bring a thermometer with me, yeah. 
But I'll teach you a rule of thumb in a second on how to tell meat temperature just by feel. Oh, perfect. You guys want to come up and see this sauce? That is right what we're looking for there. Look at that. Perfect. That is awesome. That is really awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this stuff over here. Okay, so this is just all this is. I roasted the pork in this Dutch oven and I threw in some butter, Worcestershire sauce, and some mushrooms. Okay, and what I'm going to do is come over here, throw this pork in there. Okay, just toss it in the sauce a little bit. All right, that's it, guys. So, why don't you guys come take. I'm not going to serve you, so if you want to try some, there's some cups right there and some forks right there. Just grab a piece and have at it. Here is some tongs. And hold on one second. I am a... <laughs> I better try one. Will you fork me up one? Oh, thank you.